Welcome back. We're at week 22. Probability fun continues. Good job hanging in there. Um, this week, our word of the week is distribution. Um, so we have been talking about probability. We've been talking about different factors um, or methods and different probability problems. And this week we're continuing that thought with um, the idea of distribution. So distribution is the pattern in your results. And so you make conclusions based on the pattern or distribution of your results, your probability results. Um, so again, what is probability? Probability is the mathematical study of chance. What is chance? Chance is the likelihood that something will or will not happen. All right, why are we studying probability? We're studying probability to learn more about God's world and to understand, begin to understand why some things could or could not just happen. So again, remind yourself, and remind your class, we're just learning the grammar of probability. Um, as we get into these more complex ideas, um, we cannot, well, I cannot at least yet, make dialectical or rhetorical type conclusions because we're just not there yet in our knowledge base. Um, so just have fun with these experiments um, and just remember we're in the grammar stage of learning. So we're just learning the vocabulary of probability, distribution, sampling. We're just learning definitions. We're practicing these things um, and some basic experiments and just having fun with it. We can build on that knowledge base later. So for distribution, um, this week we are doing the blueberry pancake experiment. Our materials are very simple. We'll have, um, I'll have a dice enough for um, the kids to work in pairs. And then you also have a blueberry pancake sheet for each of those pairs. Um, the experiments you're going to do first of all as a class and a tutor um, doing it up on the board and then you're going to be able to break off in pairs or in the littles you can um, do tables and have a parent per table whatever works best um, again the idea with breaking off in groups is to get more results um, to compare your probabilities because we know to find your probability outcome we look at our desired outcome over our total possible outcomes. And our probability, um, our results of an experiment are not always equal to a probability, but the more attempts you do, the more results you have, the closer they are to an accurate probability of whatever it is you're investigating. And so that's the idea of doing it once as a class to get an idea of what we're doing and then breaking off into our pairs or groups to get more results, to get a more accurate probability. All right, so what we do, I've started the tutor demonstration once, you don't have to watch me roll the dice 15 times. Um, but you're gonna have, first of all, your six pancakes up on the board. You're gonna number them one through six. You're gonna have your dice. And the story goes that we are making blueberry pancakes in our particular bowl, we only had 15 blueberries. So we wanna know what's the likelihood we will have at least four blueberries in our pancake because if you're making blueberry pancakes, they gotta have something in there, right? So when we roll the dice, depending on the number you get, is the number of pancake that gets a blueberry. So I've already done 10 rolls, gonna do another one. I got a number six, so my number six pancake here gets another blueberry. And a one. And, oh gracious, six. Five. Four. Oh good, finally got one. All right, how many is that? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so I have my 15 blueberries now. So again, we've rolled it 15 times. We've distributed our blueberries. Now we're gonna look for patterns or the distribution of our results or blueberries. Now this is kind of a trick I want you just to think about as you're, as you're answering these questions. The question is, 
what is the probability or likelihood that our pancake will have more than four blueberries? So our desired outcome is more than four over our total possible outcomes, which is six, because the question is about the pancakes. The question is not, how many times did I roll a number four? Um, or how many times did I roll a four, five, or six? It's not about the dice roll like we did the first week. This is adding a whole other factor into it with looking at a distribution or pattern. So with the question we ask, the experiment we're performing will, depend, will determine your, um, your probability fraction or how you um, pronounce or declare your outcome. So if we answer this question, how many pancakes, what's the probability of this first experiment? Will a pancake have more than four? Well, only one of my pancakes does. So one out of my six possible pancakes has more than four. How many have less than or equal to two? So have at least two pancakes or two blueberries, sorry. Um, one, two, three, four. So four out of six. Um, so again, my desired outcome. So less than or, oh, sorry, I did that wrong. Less than or equal to two would be one, two, three. So three out of six. So three out of six have less than or equal to two pancake or two blueberries. And then how many have greater than six? Zero. My desired outcome over my total possible outcomes are six pancakes. And so those are some um, probabilities or outcomes that we can um, determine from this particular thing. So, um, so again, the, the answer for, especially for your denominator here, is going to be the number of pancakes, because that's the question we're asking, versus if I said, how many times did I roll the number five? It would be two out of 15. The total times I did it would be 15. The number that my desired outcome of number five would be two out of 15. Um, but that is not my question. My question is, which pancake, how many times did a pancake get this? Well, out of six pancakes, my desired outcome is whatever. So I hope that makes sense. So we're, we're taking it a step further than where we did the first week when we were rolling the dice. Um, okay, so this is the tutor one. So you're gonna just show them basically um, the idea here. And again, we're looking for patterns. So um, in this idea of distribution, there's also this idea of outliers. So things that don't fit the pattern. So you could look at just my one you know, one time of doing it and say, is there anything that looks like an outlier to you? Um, well, number six has a lot more than the rest. So the likelihood of getting, you know, five or more is still one out of six. Um, so I guess you can really say that that is, but as each kid is doing them, as you're getting a group, if one group got, you know, oh, got 10, and the second pancake and zero and some of the others, that would be an outlier. So their results could still be counted, but they may skew your overall results. Um, and so because their distribution or their pattern was not similar to everybody else's. Um, so sometimes those outliers will happen. Um, our dice can, um, can do that and that does skew or throw off our, our results. So, tutors are going to do this. Again, make sure you clarify our probability is total desired over our possible outcomes, which are out of our six possible pancakes. And then each pair or table will have their set of six pancakes and their dice. They're going to do the same thing. You're going to have 15 possible blueberries that will be distributed amongst your pancakes. Um, they can put use their pencils to put a dot, just like you did on the board. Um, and then together, as a class, you're going to do the same questions. So um, how many, you know, go group to group, how many of your pancakes had more than four? 
and then write your results up on the board and see if you start to see a similar pattern um, with more results. Um, so again, um, our key highlighted points this week are distribution is looking for a pattern of results um, to make a more acceptable or accurate probability. Um, outliers are those that don't really fit the pattern of everybody else's. Um, doesn't mean those results aren't important, but they can, and that, you know, when you're doing bell curves and when you're doing that kind of thing, they often will knock those out because um, they skew the whole results. So that's what an outlier doesn't really fit the distribution or pattern of other results. You can see if those come up in your class or not. Um, and I think that's it. So have fun with it. Um, if you still have time for the older classes, um, you can do it again with 30 blueberries. And so they're gonna roll the dice 30 times and then see if you use if you have more blueberries, obviously your probability of having at least four is gonna go up. And um, so you can talk about that. But again, with that, your probability might go up, but your desired outcome or your total outcome is still gonna be six. You know, again, it's just how many um, of those have at least four blueberries. Well, if you start off with 30 instead of 15, your probability is going to go higher. Um, so if you do a game 30 times instead of 15, your probability that you're going to win is probably higher. Um, so play with that. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks, guys.